Hello everybody, good to be with you. I want to talk to you today about your untrue nature. You know, we hear a lot about your true nature and we hear about how to explore it and how to discover it and how to accept it and how to rest in it and do all this stuff. But what I'm telling you is that the majority of those teachings will be futile for the majority of the seekers who follow them. This is not, I'm not talking anybody down, everybody's doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. I'm just telling you to notice it for yourself. And I know this is true because I regularly work with pe people that are 10, 20, 30, 40 years on the non-dual path. I have woken up one guy that was 60 years on the non-dual path and he didn't have a clue as to who he was until he came and talked to me. So, and I, this is not blowing up Fred Davis. There's no teacher here. There's just a teaching. This is no, there's no Fred Davis. So there's, I'm not, this is, there's nothing egoic about this. There's nothing trying to, I'm not trying to promote anything. I'm just trying to talk to you. Really, I'm trying to talk to you. But I want to talk to you empty. I don't want to talk to you full. <laughs> but if there's nobody there, who am I talking to? Well, let me tell you something. In the absence of a Fred, because there's no Fred here, and if, since I'm saying that, well, then what is it that you're looking at? Well, you're looking at a unit, aren't you? So at least within the parameters of relativity, there is, there is genuinely a unit here. And I want to say this is all absolutely true. I want to say that it is true-ish. Okay? And it's, it'll, it'll make my point. So... There is a unit here, and there's a unit on the other side of this screen, and that unit on the other side of the screen is looking at the unit on this side of the screen. There's two units, but this, I'm not talking to units. See, if I want to talk to units, you know, if I just have a desire to talk to units, then I'll just talk to this tin can, because it's a unit. And it has zero capacity to wake up. It's just an empty unit. And that body that you're wearing, that you thought you were, year after year after year after year, is just an empty unit also. It's, and, and it's not even that different from that tin can. It's more complex. But it's still a persistent, identifiable pattern. It's not, there's, there's no personality, right? There's no character is the best way to put it. Personality is conditioning. So, but the character is made up. See, Fred Davis just couldn't wait, wait until he woke up to the truth of God. And what happened was the truth of God woke up to the fiction of Fred Davis instead. So, what I'm talking to is, a, is misidentified awakeness. Because here, in the absence of a Fred, now look at this. We're not taking a Fred from this picture. We're just not putting one in it to begin with. See that backwards pull? The backward, the living method of awakening. The backwards, the backwards of teaching. That's what I often call it. Because it goes at everything backwards. The reason it's founded upon backward principles is that when I woke up, when this awakening occurred through this unit, I was sitting in my living room and the first thing I know, the very first thing that I noticed when thought sort of returned was, oh my God, there's no Fred. There's no Fred. And what I am, what, I, what I've been looking for, what I've been looking with, attention, what I've been looking with is what I've been looking for. Awareness. What's attention? Focused awareness. So awareness, I've been looking for awareness. Now, when awareness is looking for awareness, how long do you think it can look? It can look forever, can't it? So when the seeker, 
when coming from the idea that I'm an independent entity, and not only that, I'm not awake, and I gotta get awake somehow. And I don't even know why I gotta get awake. I didn't choose to be a seeker, it chose me, but now I know it's burning inside me. I got to get, I've just got to wake up. Well, there's no body over there. So in the absence of a Fred, what I notice is left over here is this. Whatever this is. Because I don't know what it is. See, because I'm not giving myself the dubious benefit of language. Because I can notice it's very easy for me to tell you what you are, or to, to, for me to tell you that I am, but I can't possibly tell you what I am. Because I don't know what I am. Just like this. I know that this cannot be other than me, but I also know that it's not equal to me. Because you know what's the truth? I don't even need manifestation. Isn't that something? I don't even need manifestation. Why don't you check right now? Check right now with the thing that's looking through that body. There's, a, there, there's an aliveness over there that's distinct from that body. It's not sense-driven, but it's easily noticed if you look for it, which we pretty much never do. Because the one thing that attention never pays any attention to is what? Attention itself. Attention never pays any attention to attention. Attention goes looking for itself. So how can it pay attention to itself when it's looking for itself? Awareness goes looking for awareness. Now this, when we come down to this, what do we got here? I don't know, but we can, let's just call it oneness, okay? We can call it manifestation. We can call it aspects of consciousness. We can call it whatever we want, but right now we're going to call it oneness. And what I know, what I notice here is that this oneness See, if there's only one, if there's only one, I mean, the, the underlying principle of all of non-duality and this teaching, whatever it is, is what? That there's one thing going on. That there's one thing. That we are all one, so to speak. I'm, I'm arguing that there's no we to be all one. But certainly that we are not talking about, talking about oneness here. We're not talking about sameness. You know yourself as the sameness. You know, as sameness, you know yourself as the void. When you know yourself as manifestation, you know yourself as oneness. But if there's actually, I want you to look at this. If there's only one thing going on, if you don't do not disagree with the fundamental underlying principle of everything we do, then let me ask you a question: Is there any way? If there's not but one thing going on, is there any possible way that you cannot be it? Hmm? Is there? I mean, if there's just one thing going on, you've got to be it, don't you? Now, I'm not talking to a unit. I'm talking to the awakeness that's functioning through that unit unconsciously and trying to help it come to see, know itself consciously. And many of you have woken up, and I get all that, so you're just going to have to excuse it, but many of you have woken up who are now no longer clear, and this is going to help you. So, but I'm, but I'm, but you know, deep respect for awakenings that have occurred and all that, and, and I know it because I've got a lot of people around me who are awake, and I know that this it's, it's just not as rare as you think. It's as rare as you make it. I will promise you that, because <laughs> there is only awakeness. There's nothing other than awakeness. See, that's the one thing going on. 
You're looking for awareness, but there's only awareness. <clears throat> See, in this very common, ordinary, everyday awareness that's looking at this, that's the awareness I'm talking about. It's not an exotic awareness. It's not a wow, trumpets and angels, boom, boom, boom awareness. Sometimes those things happen to units within time and, and space. But what you are is outside of time and space. What you are is the awakeness itself. The abil it is that which has the ability to, or it is, it is, as, as the Bhagavad Gita says, it is not the seeing, it is that which by seeing, seen or seer, it is that by which seeing can occur. That was not a perfect translation. It is not that by which, it is not the listen, listener or the listen to, it is that by which listening is made possible. It's this awakeness, this awareness, this attention right here, right now. And that's what I'm talking to. I'm talking to myself. There's nothing else for me to talk to. If there's just one thing going on and I'm saying that you have to be it, which is, I believe is true. You check me. You, you you check it yourself. And I'm saying that you can't not be it. Guess what? I can't not be it either. And if there's just one thing, then what is it that's talking to you? It can only be the one thing that is. Talking to the one thing that is. And talking about the one thing that is, and talking within the one thing that is. A lot of teachings where you'll have the exalted one in the front of the room and the knuckleheads elsewhere in the room that are the seekers that are trying to come there. And I use knuckleheads very sweetly. I was a knucklehead for 24 years, just fine. I can be a knucklehead now in, a, in many, many ways. So, but it is the knucklehead seekers out there that have come to hope to become like the awakened one up there on the stage. Right? I just can't wait until I, until I wake up like that one, says the unit, says the character. Fred wants to wake up desperately because that's going to be a big ad for Fred, right? You know, then maybe then then I'll get some money in girls. That's hell. Yeah, that's the way my thinking was. I mean, I, I, I was not really all that deeply spiritual. I was going through the motions, but it wasn't really ringing true until after awakening, and it didn't always ring true there either. Several years of a lot of confusion. That's what I'm trying to cut short for you. Is I'm, this teaching is being offered as a as a step for you a step like a like, like a step ladder or a stool come put your feet on these shoulders so to speak and you don't have to reinvent the wheel it's not difficult to notice your true nature please notice it with me right now notice that I can't even see the reason I, I can't even see a personality. And this, I'm, I'm, I'm reverting actually to what I do in sessions because that's what I'll say. Is that I, it's an, I'm, I'm hearing a, a rumor of a Helen, but I can't see a Helen. I can only see myself. This begins to begins to break away the the crust because that's all there is. The truth is right here. You've crusted it over with what? With thoughts. Because when these thoughts arise within and to awakeness, awakeness, the conditioning that is here, the, the, the reflexive conditioning that is here immediately goes, ah, 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 that's my thought. And once it's my thought, I endow it with what? I make it important and I make it true. Because what you think is kind of suspicious, but what I think is gospel. Surely we all know that. And what you think is, um, I don't know what kind of stuff you may think about because you don't look like you're all that significant, but what I think about, I don't think about anything that's not important. The stuff I think about is important. 
and it's true. And I notice that I'm right. Isn't that amazing? No matter what it is, I'm right. It's incredible. And why would I be right? Because I'm the center of the universe. Look at my vision. Everywhere I look, I am the center of the universe, says this unit. And it says this view that's coming through this unit when the view that's coming through this unit thinks it is the unit. And it's not. It's not the unit. The thing that's coming through this unit is spirit itself. It is awakeness. It is, it, 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 it is consciousness. It is Tao. It is God. It is whatever you... Well, we'll say that. Brahman. The only reason I, that I teetered there is that what I notice is that as I go back to that that strange quote I had from Nisargadatta that blew me away years ago and makes me laugh now, was when somebody asked Nisargadatta, they said, tell me about God, and he said, oh, he is my devotee. He does all this for me. <laughs> which which just freaked me out at the time, and which I now I see exactly what he's talking about, and, and it's very funny. But... Um, what I want you to notice is that what's, there's, there, there's an aliveness over there. You can tell it. You can look. You can use it right now. Use, I want you to consider yourself to be the, 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 uh, the, in, the, the aliveness, the consciousness, the awakeness, the whatever, the, that buzz in your head, whatever it is that feels like that, that sense of being. Just for a moment, pretend you're that. And then look through this unit as if it was just like another pair of glasses, okay? Like it was a lens, because that's what it is. It's a lens. It's a camera lens. This, what, what, what we're experiencing here, folks, in effect, this relativity, this dream, which is wonderful and amazing, this is a whiteness's virtual reality. You can put this whole teaching in that sentence. This experiencing, this present experiencing that's occurring over here in this, in this apparent geographic location and over there in that apparent geographic location through these apparent units this is a whiteness is virtual reality. And if you're not real familiar with virtual reality, well, let me give you a quick shot about it because I've read on a fair amount and I've experienced just a taste of it through some films the New York Times puts out. But it's not full blown, but it's a good, but it's a nice taste. And so you put on a helmet in the, in the best virtual reality sir. Uh, circumstances like in a lab you put on a helmet and you put on gloves and when you do that they start to run a movie and in that mo in, and as you watch that movie then you notice that you're interactive with it that you're in the movie oh my god you're in the movie and when if you turn around you're still looking you're looking behind you behind the character in the movie. You're looking behind the character in the movie. And your consciousness will instantly, I mean almost instantly switch to feeling like, oh, I'm the guy in the movie. I read quite recently where this extreme level of virtual reality. It's not that you don't, you can't buy it. I mean, you can, you know, the Samsung has some apparently some something wonderful that you can use, and that it's not it's not cheap, but it's it's not out of reach for some of us. The uh, I mean, you don't have to be a damn millionaire to buy it or anything like that. You have to be committed, and you have to have a bit of money. But it's it's but it's available now. On some levels, I'm not saying it's as con as convincing, but you put on goggles. I don't think there's anything with the gloves or anything, but you put on the goggles, and you're able to experience yourself in a whole nother reality. And because consciousness goes where it, consciousness identifies with the 
chief character in this dream, it's identified as this, it thinks it's this. See, and the reason it thinks it's this has been brainwashed into thinking it was this. Because let's look at when you were a tiny baby, when you were an infant. You know, when you come into this world, folks, there ain't no division, there's no separation for a newborn and an infant and up until about the time you're two is when it really kicks in and then it'll develop more strongly from there. But there's, there's self-awareness from two on, but there's none up until then. So there's no division, there's no me, so there can't be an other. So the first couple, your first couple of years here is spent here as oneness. That experience, it is the experiencing of oneness. There's just oneness. So, you know, the baby doesn't need intellect to figure that out. It's just because it's just, ah, uh, it's just grokking everything. It's not thinking anything. Grokking meaning that it, there's stuff that's, that's coming in almost like on a poor level. You know, it's just, it's, it's just being under, understood is the wrong word. It's just being gotten. It's just being gotten. So the baby's experience is that of what? If there's no me and no other, if there's no me and no other here, what I, what I do find here is I find space. I find space with an enormous collection of arising. So no normal, enormous selection of appearances. Oh, it, I find space with a whole bunch of objects in it. See, but the objects are really only coming once there's self-awareness here that there's a me. Because now there's me, world, objects. See how that comes? With, with the birth, the, 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 there's, they say, the, the Tao Te Ching says, first there's one, which is me, and then there's two, which is me and other, and then it says, and, and then there are the 10,000 things. <laughs> one, one, two, 10,000. Whole world made up a bunch of these, isn't it? Zillions and zillions and trillions of these, zero and one, black and white, short and tall, wide and thin, uh, uh, white and black, uh, good and bad, all of it. See, the world exists only upon the concept of comparison, which is that I have this, which is that um, I know I'm not awake because, how do you know you're not awake? How do you know you're not a whiteness? You don't know you're not a whiteness because you are a whiteness. And you can't know that you're not awake because you are awakeness itself. And there is only awakeness. But there are two states to awakeness. There's conscious awakeness and there's unconscious awakeness. When people come to me for awakening sessions, they come to me as unconscious, when I say me, the apparent Fred, there's still an experience of Fred here. There's a sense of Fred here. And there's a sense of you over there. And don't think we got to get rid of that. We don't. We get to enjoy all the world with all of its objects. We get to, um, we get to explore everything because we learn to use language without believing it. But in the absence of language right now, the thing that's over there, that's, that the thing that's looking at me right now, not the not the unit. Get away from the unit. That which is that which is using that unit to talk through. How many things do you actually see in the absence of language? You can report to me. That you are. You can't report to me that you're not because there had to be something there to report to me that you're not. But in the absence of language, 
because I want you to notice that the reason you can't tell me that you can tell me that you are but you can't tell me what you are is that what you are is prior to language is it not sure it is because you're ah, 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 ah. that's the reason teachers can only point is that it can't be said the problem is, is that it's the individual who takes the pointer. Whether it was said that way or not, it would, it would depend upon the relative clarity of the teacher. But it is, but 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 it is the it is the ones in the audience who take these pointers. Thank God, that's a good pointer for me, Fred. And I can't wait until I use this pointer to clear up and wake up. And that'll just very rarely happens. Very very rarely happens. Yet when we come at this from the backwards way, 90 plus percent of the people that I talk to wake up. It's just that simple. Those are the facts. So why are the, why are the odds reversed? Because I'm coming from the backwards way. I'm coming. I'm, I'm teaching you the backwards way. I'm trying. I'm not. I'm not talking to a, a blockhead over there that's trying to wake up and needs to wake up and is a desperate seeker and suffering so much. There's no such thing over there. There's an experience of that over there. That's the an experience over there. But whose experience is it? Do you think this tin can is experiencing being a tin can? No. Why not? Because it does not have the capacity to be a tin can. We pay all of our attention to the tin can. We pay all of our attention to the objects. But what actually that infant is seeing itself is only seeing space. The parents are seeing an infant. They are looking from a view at what they believe is another localized view. But from that first two years, no localized view. It's only oneness. <clears throat> then eventually there gets to be a sense of individuality. Who's got the sense of individuality? If there's just oneness, what is it that has the sense of individuality? It's got to be oneness, doesn't it? Oneness begins to get a sense of, of individuality because there's so much information coming from this direction. And it's beginning to feel like, you know, it's being encouraged to, to stand up and be counted. But from the baby's perspective, there's only space. It can't tell the difference between, like, you know, there's no, no, no such thing as inside and outside because there's no such thing as other. So the parents are looking at an infant and encouraging their precious infant, but the infant is only, the, the awakeness there is only seeing from space, as space. And it's seeing space. Actually, the experience is that there's just, guess what? There's just one thing going on. But we pay all attention. But see, what I want you to notice is that I could be your parents, and I could be talking to you. See, this is the ostrich, that, that voice in your head. I always described it as an ostrich, because if you look this way, you can see there's an ostrich, right? So I finally just went out and got myself a damn ostrich, because, you know, I can talk to you about philosophy all day long, or I can show you an ostrich, and I noticed that this is more effective. Right, so I'm looking at this ostrich. Now, there's, there's not there, the ostrich is no more alive than that tin can. But look, it looks like it's alive, doesn't it? It moves all around. It makes, does this, that, and the other. And if it's, and if it's in our heads, hell, it doesn't. It never stops talking, does it? And what is it saying? It's a running argument with the world, is it not? It's a running argument with the world. <laughs> But I notice that in the absence of language, I don't know what I am and I don't know what this is. Don't give yourself the dubious benefit of language for just a minute. Look around. Just look around. Don't name anything. Just look. In the absence of names, do you know what you're looking at? No. And the Tao Te Ching says what? The, 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 the Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao. It's not saying it's not Tao, because there's not anything but Tao. 
but it's saying that anything it can look at is not the eternal Tao because the eternal Tao is that which is looking. It's the looking. I say that which is looking as if there's a, you know, a big uh, automaton or a big god over there on something, you know, with, sitting back and watching us. It's not like that. But I, but but it, but but characterizing it as an entity is the easiest way to to speak it and understand it. So it's a it's 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 I'm using skillful duality to or a skillful description of duality to ex try to explain non-duality. We use what we got, and that's what I got. But see, what if consciousness believes it is this puppet? Now this thing looks alive, and it looks like it's got free will. It looks like it, you know, and we, we could say it's making decisions. It's deciding whether it wants to go over here or wants to go over there. It's just, oh, my soul, I've got all this free will and this and that and the other. But this puppet is a stand-in for your butt body. And what I'm telling you is that spirituality is not about the puppet. So, you know, it doesn't make any difference <clears throat> if the puppet smokes or drinks or eats meat or dances until the scars come home, whatever. I mean, all of those things are going to be difficult to overcome. Don't get me wrong. <clears throat> but it is not about the unit or what the unit does. It's about the hand. It's about the animating presence that's operating within the, the puppet. Because look, in the absence of the, with the animating presence of that puppet is what? It's this hand, isn't it? And in the absence of this animating presence, what have I got? I have a glorified sock. That's what I really have, the glorified sock. And this wants me to wake it up. <laughs> but it's not really this it's consciousness that thinks it's this and wants me to wake this up so that consciousness can be awake when it actually is already awakeness there are two states to conscious conscious uh, to, 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 to awakeness there's conscious awakeness unconscious awakeness I am talking usually in session, not no, but 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 less than actually in a lot of in clarity sessions. Now I am more often talking to conscious awareness than I am unconscious awareness by by a strong measure. I have lots and lots of people that are around me who are awake. I didn't used to be like that, but you know, in a, in it, as a statement of the most obvious nature, let me just tell you that I never started a spiritual teacher teaching before until this one. I had no comparison, and so I started this spiritual teaching, and I was talking to unconscious awakeness every time I had any kind of session. Now, very often, the this, the point of reference would change during those meetings and it would see that it is the, the, the and the whiteness would see that it is the space and not the little man that's the reason I'm talking I'm not talking to a body over there come in the back door don't be somebody trying to wake up you can do that for a lifetime li lifetimes it's been done billions of times. Give up on that right now. Give up on being a unit that is trying to get awake and notice that you are awakeness itself and you're simply not clear. Because there is all of this conditioning that as soon as you wake up, the conditioning comes in and it goes and the next thing you know, you're, wow, that was a pretty cool session with Fred. I wish I'd woken up. <laughs> or, and that was a great session with Fred. I woke up, but man, now it's gone. Right? Let me ask you a question. <clears throat> if oneness wakes up, can oneness fall out of itself? Now, whether it's awake or not, can oneness fall out of itself? No! But can oneness think it's falling out of itself? Oh, yeah. Because that's a thought. And it's being believed. It's a, it is a thought that is arising within and to oneness or awakeness. Oneness when we're talking about manifestation. Awakeness when we're not. 
It is a thought that's arising within and to awakeness, and it now is, it, and because I think I am Fred, and that's Fred's thought, I make it mine, I make it important, I believe it, and I think I'm not awake. How many times have you had teachers tell you, well, you're actually already awake, you just don't know it yet? And that's what I thought, too. And it really is. I mean, they were telling me, you know, Ooh, you're afraid you're already away. And it would actually, it would actually piss me off. I tell you the truth, it would really make me mad. Because it was like, well, what kind of idiot is this? I mean, obviously, because what's my starting point? What's my baseline? My baseline is that I am this unit. I'm this body. I'm this body and i got to get free. <laughs> <clears throat> so they would tell me I'd, that I was already awake and I would knew I was this unit. I knew it wasn't awake. I knew I was Fred Davis, the character Fred Davis, and I knew that Fred Davis wasn't awake. So I knew they were crazy and, hell, and, and I was following them. So you can imagine the de debacle I had. And then awakening occurred and I noticed, oh, I see. They were right. I am awake. I've always been awake. I can't be other than awake. Because I'm awakeness itself. And so are you. I think this might have been a good one. See you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.